Well, it is that time of year again as we wind down the fall and head into the winter. The holidays are coming up. A lot of people are thinking about printing their images uh, in order to put on their own wall or to give as gifts or even to sell in different shows for later this year or next year. Uh, whatever category you fit into in this video, I want to help you guys to make your images look a little bit better in print. Now there's a thousand different ways that you can prepare an image for print. This in my opinion is one of the easiest ways and it will do basically everything that you need to do uh, to make your print look fantastic. Now we're gonna be using a software in this video. Um, you can resize your photos in Photoshop, um, but it is a little bit more difficult, a lot more things to learn. So we are gonna be using Topaz Gigapixel AI, which does a fantastic job. Um, this isn't spawn or they don't even know I'm making this video. Um, but I did want to highlight this software because I do think that it works really nicely, really easily. Now, if you are a Topaz Photo AI owner, you can also do this in Photo AI, though I do think that Gigapixel is a little bit better to do it in if you have both softwares. Now, you might be thinking, why would I want to resize my photo in the first place? Why can't I just send it to the printer? And if you are using a very high megapixel camera, it might not be totally necessary to resize your photos, um, but I would always recommend it because I always want to send my file to the printer exactly how it needs to be. I don't want the printer to have to mess with the colors. I don't want them to have to mess with the sizing, nothing like that. So because of that, I like to do it all myself. Now, in the example that I'm going to use in today's video, um, I'm not going to use a file from my regular camera, which is 60 megapixels. Instead, I'm going to use a drone file here. Um, it ends up being like 18 megapixels or 12 or something like that. Let's see. Uh, 12.3 megapixels and I want to do that because it will show off more change and I'll show you how you can upscale this image that's shot on a relatively small megapixel sensor. So the first thing you want to do is find your image in Lightroom. I'm assuming most of you guys are Lightroom users. If you're not, you can just drag and drop your image into the program. But if you're a Lightroom user, click on the photo that you would like to upsize. You can right click or hold control and click and you're going to go down to edit in and you're gonna go to uh, Topaz Gigapixel AI. Now you will need to install this app um, if you don't already have it, so do keep that in mind. Um, but once you have it, it should work as a plugin just like that so you can open it directly from Lightroom. Now, if you've edited your photo here, you wanna do edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, then you'll hit edit. Now that will load this file. So it's gonna load in. You will likely be in this view when you load in or even in this view. Um, you can change the view down here. Personally, I like to do the middle view here. It's, I don't know what they call it, but it allows you to adjust the slider um, to preview the before and after results. Now, working our way down here, there's a few different things you can do. Um, you can upscale. So if you wanted to say, if you knew, okay, I just want to double the size of this image or quadruple, you could do that. But it's actually going to be much better to adjust uh, the dimensions to exactly what size you want to print your image. Now, uh, probably you're going to load in with it in pixels. And, you know, mine would have been a lot smaller than this. I've already kind of played around with the settings. But when you load this in, it, it'll say pixels here. Change the pixels to inches. We want to work in inches. Or if you are not in America, um, you're going to probably want to use centimeters. So you can do centimeters there. So we're going to do inches. Um, and then your pixel density, that is uh, how many basically dots per inch or pixels per inch you will have on that print. Now, common um, myth is that you need to print at 300 DPI. There's very few places that are capable of printing at 300 DPI, and especially on metal and canvas prints. Generally speaking, canvas prints are going to be between 70 and 150 uh, DPI, and most high-quality metal prints will be 150 uh, DPI. So you're going to want to change this to 150 is my preference, but I would always uh, recommend contacting your print shop that you're going to be printing at to figure out what their recommended settings are. That being said, I want to do 150 PPI, uh, and then we can adjust the dimensions up here. So let's just say I wanted to do um, a print of 60 on the height, and then um, the width would automatically snap. So you can see when I change this, like if I change it to 55, you'll notice the width will automatically adjust. So it stays um, proportionate. You don't have to adjust both. So, you know, Maybe I'd crop this and do a 40 by 60, but I'm not going to bother doing that in this video. Uh, if you have two to three ratio images, it'll automatically snap to 40 by 60. You can see it's a 2.2x scale factor. Now you have a lot of different models here um, in order to upscale. And 
personally, I like art and CG, which is for artwork and graphics specifically. Um, but you can try all of the different settings. Low res is going to be great if you have like a, you know, like a five megapixel or maybe something you shot on your phone. Um, and the other thing that's really cool about this is you can hit this lightning box and it will guess which or not guess, but it'll use AI to determine which one you should use. And you can even hit compare here which um, I really like to hit compare and you can choose up the four models to compare. So let's choose standard um, art and CG uh, low res and that'll be good. Neither of the other two are going to be good. We'll hit compare. Now it's going to load these three. We can scroll around the image here and see how it does. Now it's not loaded yet. You got to wait just a second. You'll see it says upscaling that we can pick the model that looks the best. Keep in mind because we're upscaling, um, it is. It has the tendency that it could look um, a little bit fake. It could look a little bit over sharpened. So we want to choose the model that does the best job. Now, the one thing is every time you move the screen, it is going to have to re-render. So keep that in mind. But you can see like low resolution, I don't like. It's a little bit noisy. Standard's a little bit noisy. I think the art and CG, you can see how this tree is so much sharper than in the other images. So I'm going to go with that. So I will click on that one right here, Art and CG. You can see there's a blue box around it. I'll click Apply Model. That'll load back out on the main image. Now we can go down. I don't use this generative model um, for resizing for print, so I'm going to skip over that, but I do use the model settings. This is going to affect how much sharpen or denoise you use. Um, you know, if I had adjusted these sliders to whatever I thought, and then I didn't end up liking them, you can click this uh, lightning, and it will automatically select what it thinks the sharpen and denoise should be. About in there is looking pretty good to me. Now you can see what's left of this slider here is before, what's right is after. You can see it's quite a bit sharper, and we've added um, we've added pixels. You probably can't tell unless, you know, maybe if I zoom in a really long ways, we'll see if we can tell here that we've added some resolution to this. Um, yeah, you can definitely tell. See how that's kind of pixelated? That is not so pixelated. Now, of course, sure, this doesn't look amazing. It's a drone photo. It's not super sharp. Um, and in addition, we are so incredibly far zoomed in, you will not be able to see this in your print. I just wanted to show you, you can see how we've kind of added some resolution to this photo. I always recommend um, zooming this out to 100%, taking a step back from your computer and looking at it from afar because at 100% on your screen, this is showing the real life size print. So if I had a 40 by 60 screen and I put it at 100%, then my image would perfectly fill my whole screen. So once you're happy with that, go ahead and hit export to Adobe Lightroom Classic. All right, now we will jump back over here in the Lightroom. You can see that file automatically just created right here. It popped up right next to the other one, which is perfect. Um, you can go to the library module and double check that the dimensions are larger. You can see here on this first file, we have this file dimensions, and then here um, the file has gotten bigger. Additionally, if we click on it, you can see it's now 60.7 megapixels as opposed to 12.3 on the first image. You can also uh, hold shift and click. Press C to compare. I know we just compared in Topaz, but it's nice to compare here in Lightroom as well. Um, you can see as I zoom in um, both images, when they're zoomed equally, you can see this one zooms a lot further than this one because there's more megapixels to see. So I think that looks pretty good. Now we will select that image and we're going to export it for print. Now we're going to go to File, Export. Now we can go through. Um, I like to have my files export to the desktop. I just delete them afterwards. Um, so I'll go um, folder, desktop, export to desktop. And then you can do a subfolder if you want. Otherwise, I can go down. I'm not going to rename. Do nothing with the video. Um, for file settings, this is important. You're going to want to go JPEG, 100 on the quality. Color space, preferably Adobe RGB if your printer can support it. Um, most high quality printers are going to support Adobe RGB. It's a little bit wider color gamut than sRGB. But if they don't, go ahead and just go with sRGB. This is very important. Um, we don't need any content credentials. We're going to go down to image sizing. Make sure none of these boxes are checked. We don't want to do any image resizing. It's already in the correct size that we want. Um, and then don't do any more output sharpening because we have done that already um, in Gigapixel. No metadata, no watermarking, no post processing. Go ahead and hit export. And then you can upload that image straight to your printer. 
Now, hopefully that helps you guys um, to make some better prints this winter. Now, if you're just printing little eight by 12s, this probably isn't gonna really make any noticeable difference, but this is gonna make a difference when you're trying to print big. And seriously, um, you can print very large files using this method from cameras that don't have very many megapixels. People ask me all the time, how many megapixels do I need to print this size? How many megapixels to print this size? And the answer really is that you don't need a lot. The more megapixels you have, the better it will look because of course, getting those megapixels in the field rather than having to upsize them will look better. Um, but still, I've printed images from 10 megapixel files at 40 by 60 size that still look fantastic using this method. Now, hey, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's not sponsored. Topaz isn't paying me to make this, but um, I, since I am mentioning their software, I do have an affiliate link down below. If you're going to purchase the software, do me a favor, use my link. It helps give me a few dollars when you make a purchase and it helps to just overall support this channel. I truly think that this is one of the best ways to upscale your images for print. I think that you will not be disappointed if you use it on your next large prints that you make. Hopefully that helps. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Again, I greatly appreciate you checking out this week's video. Now, otherwise, that is all she wrote. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll see you guys next time. This is Austin James Jackson. See ya.